So my name is Ed Moran, I'm from Deloitte, and I did a presentation today at Inma on media consumption and media interaction with different generations here in the United States and in four other countries. So we looked also at the UK, Germany, Japan, and Brazil. And we call it the Media Democracy Survey, and it's really about people having more control over how they consume media. Newspapers, magazines, video, uh, internet content. TV, radio, Sirius, satellite radio, all kinds of different uh, things and really looking at what they're doing. So some interesting takeaways from the survey are that people are now doing an incredible number of media and entertainment activities. So the fragmentation is just ridiculous. I mean, when someone's, let's say, watching television, they're usually doing four or five other digital activities. So they'll be texting, they'll be speaking on their cell phone, they'll be reading a newspaper, they'll be reading a book, they'll have their laptop open, they'll have their social networking page open. So there's just a tremendous amount of, of really fragmentation that's taking place. So we wanted to look at like why are people doing these things and what's some intelligence we can pull out of it. So one of the one of the key takeaways, first of all, is that the PC has really emerged now as the preeminent entertainment device. Here in America and across the world, people consider their PC to be more important than their television. Now when you ask the younger set, if you ask millennials, right, folks who are, let's say teenagers, you ask them what's their most important device, they think, they think it's their laptop. But tied with the laptop is their cell phone. All right, so this would have been heresy five or six years ago to even think that a cell phone could be an entertainment device. What's, what, it's a two inch screen, what can you really do on it? But really, for whatever reason, they've connected with it. Maybe it's with so social, it's in your pocket all day long, you're never far from it. People feel a very strong affiliation with their cell phone, maybe that's it. Um, we're gonna watch this carefully as, it, as, it, as they age and see do they stay, still stay close to their cell phone. But the cell phone and, and the PC have really emerged as the key ways of reaching information and reaching entertainment. So that was one key takeaway. Another key takeaway is really how important social networking has become. So social networking is more than just MySpace or Facebook. Social networking is when you find people that you feel close to in some way. Maybe you like the same content, maybe you like the same show, maybe you are blogging about the same news story or you're interested in politics. We find that this cuts across all generations. And what happens is oftentimes mass media only looks at social networking from the MySpace and Facebook angle. But when you look at older folks, they're blogging like crazy about politics. They're blogging about financial, you know, about retiring and where they invest their money and how do they, you know, buy life insurance. These are things the older folks are thinking about. So the beauty of this from a, from a newspaper perspective and a news media perspective is that content's at the heart of this. So people aren't just talking about investing, they're talking about an article they read on investing. They're talking about what's taking place in the news. They're talking about data that they pulled from a news source. So there's a real opportunity for news to really, I think, leverage social networking more. And maybe it's knowing the customer better. Maybe it's doing better product development, knowing the stories that are really resonating, knowing the, the columnists that are really, really popular, and to be able to go to advertisers with, hey, we really understand your digital customer. Uh, we know them much better than just impressions. We know what they're doing, how, what kind of devices they're using, what kind of platforms they like, what are they blogging about, what are really the big topics that are being discussed. It'd probably be great for product development, for the newspaper to go back and then actually create more content that the community really wants, as opposed to the editor or a reporter driving that discussion. They have a, they have a better real-time fix on what the consumer wants. And then managing those relationships, especially on a local level, you know, knowing what are people in a neighborhood really interested in, what kind of stores, what kind of products, what are the events that really resonate with them, what are the, what's top of mind in terms of concerns. I mean, whenever you know a customer that well, you can turn that into monetization. If, it, if not through merchandising to those people, giving more information to an advertiser. So we see that as you know, being really, really big, big opportunities. That newspapers now, especially with their web properties, are starting to think much more digital and going out to advertisers and saying, we can help you reach this savvy person buying their first apartment or you know renting their first apartment or, or buying their first car and delivering those people because they're around auto um, reviews in, in someone's newspaper. All right, so I think that newspapers are getting much, much better. The other side of the question is the advertiser, how do they want to be approached? Do they want an integrated cell? Do they want someone to come to them and say, I've got television for you? I've got newspaper for you, I've got website for you, and I've got mobile phone. That, that at least my experience has been, uh, more and more advertisers getting interested in that, in that, in that, in that cross-platform, already stitched together approach. So if you're just a newspaper going out and saying, I've got, a digital, I've got a digital consumer you should be getting in front of, my experience has been that's not as persuasive as, and I can also reach that person at all these other points in the day, because as our research showed, 
that person's on their mobile phone, but they're also watching the TV. They probably have a newspaper or a magazine open in front of them as well, and then maybe they're blogging about something. So you got to hit the person. If you can hit the person on all those different things, think about how powerful that message is. You know, you're in front of that person, you know, with your brand and, and your content really in a powerful way as opposed to when they happen to look at TV, they might see you. If you can get a more holistic, stitched together experience, I mean, no, no one's really cracked that nut yet, but when that gets cracked, this going to be a very, very compelling proposition.